Commissioner, there have been a number of cases uh, recently where some Council of Europe member states have blocked, blocked certain access to information online, perhaps social media. By European standards, is this allowed? In a very strict and predictable legal framework with judicial oversight, uh, blocking can take place if there is illegal content. Uh, but in the case of Yildirim against Turkey, the European Court of Human Rights, they ruled that, uh, first of all, you need uh, not only predictable laws, but the, the, the blocking measure needs to be targeted enough so that it, it only affects the illegal content and not, uh, and not content which should be made accessible. Um, so this is, uh, it is possible, but in very circumscri circumscribed terms. Now, how can we make sure that social media users are protected because you know after all social media is high use amongst uh, the online community how can we make sure that they are protected those users well social media have become very important uh, not only for freedom of expression but for freedom of assembly and freedom of association as well and uh, targeting users of social media who are organizing protests or calling for protests is a, is a growing trend and I've tried to address this in my country work in a number of different contexts in Azerbaijan, in Spain, in Turkey. Um, I think it's absolutely essential uh, that the, uh, the internet remain a, a free space for the imparting of information, and receiving information. Um, and, and here, uh, I think that uh, the same uh, principles of proportionality and necessity should apply. Um, and we have to keep social media free because increasingly they're displacing traditional media and becoming absolutely essential for the exercise of, of a whole range of human rights. Do you think that member states are aware of how significant a change in the media landscape has taken place, uh, moving everything online or many things online, um, to, to, to add that sort of um, authority to, to, to the situation? Well, I think they are, they are aware, which is, uh, and, and some, some of the bad practices in terms of targeting activists and targeting uh, critical voices uh, offline are now moving online. Um, and it also, social media also provide opportunities for, for the authorities to follow, uh, follow activists and, and, and engage in surveillance of activities, which uh, in, in other contexts would be much more difficult to do. Um, so it is an opportunity for activists, but it's also an opportunity for those who want to repress activists. Now, the online community does include uh, younger members, children. Protecting children's rights in the digital world also represents uh, uh, an ever-growing challenge. What can be done to safeguard children's rights on the internet? Well, I think we have to empower children. Uh, the key thing is, is education, awareness raising, uh, digital literacy. The Council of Europe's uh, internet uh, literacy handbook uh, could be of use. But I think also we have to target uh, we have to target the criminals, uh, the perpetrators of child abuse, and those who are disseminating illegal content on the internet. There are real people behind these crimes. Um, and here member states should be uh, reminded of their responsibilities on, under the Convention for the Protection of Children from uh, Sexual Exploitation and Abuse and, and the Convention on Cybercrime. From children to journalists, what are the most critical challenges journalists are facing would you say, in the digital, digital age today? Well, I think right now, the, the growing trend of concern to me is following the terrorist attacks in, in Paris and, and Copenhagen. We've seen uh, the adoption of some problematic legislation in a number of member states and discussion of problematic legislation, very broad, vague, uh, anti-terrorist legislation, which could have a, a chilling uh, effect on freedom of expression. Um, we've also seen uh, the emergence uh, with, a, with a vengeance of, of mass surveillance um, and basically calls uh, to grant security services more, uh, more technical capabilities but also more powers uh, to uh, infringe on our uh, right to private life. And this has a, a very chilling, this could have a very chilling impact on freedom of expression, especially by journalists, because it affects uh, the confidentiality of journalistic sources. It affects the secrecy of, of lawyer-client relationships. Um, and this could basically send a chilling message out to activists that, uh, <clears throat> and to journalists, uh, especially investigative journalists, that they have to be very careful as what they say because they're being watched. Um, so I have urged caution and human rights proofing 
uh, of, of such legislation, but also uh, reinforcing democratic oversight of, of security services. Uh, I think this is absolutely essential because uh, it is key to keep the, the internet free, and regardless of, of the terrorist threats we face, we have to uphold human rights in, in combating that threat. You talk about uh, surveillance. The United States has very recently, in fact, reformed mass surveillance by taking away the national security agency's power to collect phone records on uh, U.S. citizens. How would or could uh, this have a digital impact on human rights online in Europe in the future? Well, I think what the United States does has a, has a huge impact on Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, first of all, because most of the major internet companies are, uh, are American-based companies, um, and the U.S. has kind of unique powers uh, on the internet, um, but also because the American intelligence services are such uh, important, powerful players, and their cooperation uh, with various players in, in Europe uh, has been extensive. Any changes in the American approach to surveillance and information gathering will have echoes uh, throughout Europe and, and, and the world. Um, and I, I, welcome, uh, I welcome a reform of, of current practices to date because I think they've run roughshod over the right to privacy and, and demonstrated that uh, democratic oversight in Europe uh, and in the U.S. as well uh, needs to be reinforced. Commissioner, thank you very much indeed.